Welcome to this new Calyx webinar. My name is Hanat Kavakant, I'm a principal engineer at Lightban, and today I will talk about how to build orchestration sagas with Calyx workflow. So there are two types of sagas, choreograph sagas and orchestration sagas. In a previous webinar, I covered choreograph sagas, so today I will talk about orchestration sagas. In both cases, a saga is about implementing long-running process in distributed systems. We are talking about a process that spans over more than one transaction. And as you know, a Calyx entity lives in its own transaction boundary. When we want to mutate two entities, you send a command to one entity, you mutate it, that's one transaction, and then you send another command to a second entity, and that mutates this entity, and that's yet another transaction. You cannot modify two entities in the same transaction. But in some, for some use case, I do need to modify more than one entity with one incoming request from the outside. So for choreography, we can use subscriptions and listen to events and state chains from my entities and then propagate the chains. The other option that we have is to use a Calyx workflows. And this, when we use Calyx workflows, we, are, we can then implement an orchestration saga. And it's about to have to build this process, but having a central point, we can say that it's a coordinator or, or a conductor in an orchestra that is um, driving and managing the, 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 the whole flow. So orchestration sites is about implement a coordinator or a conductor in an orchestra that will be responsible to manage and drive the whole flow. You start, it sends commands to, to an entity, when that entity finishes processing this command, the workflow can move to the next step and send another command to another entity and so on. What's important to know that uh, a Calyx workflow is guaranteed to run until it finishes and it saves the steps where it knows where it stopped. So if you are in the middle of a workflow and for some reason you shut down your service and break it back or there is some error that happens, the workflow knows where it was and it will restart from where it stopped. So just a very high level, uh, I will use, I have some diagrams to explain what are the main features in uh, Calyx workflow. And uh, here let's imagine that I have an e-commerce application and I have uh, uh, something triggered the checkout of a shopping cart. So the input here is the request to check out or a notification that a shopping cart has been checked out. So I build a workflow and this information gets into my, my workflow and initiates my workflow. And then the first thing that the workflow will say will do when it's initiated, it needs to do its first transition and it simply moves or indicates what is the first thing that ha needs to happen, what is the first step in that workflow. So the first transition here is execute a payment. So Calyx will move to the step execute a payment that you define yourself and then a call will be made to some payment service to execute it. Now, if that call fails, it's not a problem. A workflow is designed to just retry it. So it will retry a few times. It depends, you can configure. If you say nothing, it will re retry forever with some intervals to not overload your systems, but it will keep trying. You can also put a limit on that and say, okay, I will retry maximum three times, let's say. But let's say that here we'll just make a call. Let's say it fails the first time and then it passed, okay. I will retry and then it passes. And then I will transition. I will transition to initiate shipment that itself, this step, also execute a, a call to the shipment service to initiate the shipment. And this call returns correctly, successfully. Then I transition to the end of my workflow. You may have arbitrary number of steps and combinations you can move to one step, go back to your first step, doesn't matter much, you can decide how you want to compose them. As I was saying, you can, by default, a workflow, once it started, it needs to, to, to run until the end, um, but you can also put a timeout. You can define a timeout, say, okay, this workflow, after one hour, if uh, it's not completed yet, I need to tear it down. Or you can say that for every failure that I have 
in my workflow for every step that fails i want to retry that step at least three times and if it keeps failing i will uh, abort my workflow you can have a timeout at the workflow level and a retry strategy at the workflow level but you can also have at the step level so you can define both timeouts and retry strategies at both levels now one other important and I, fi I find it quite interesting feature is that you may you you can also execute a step it succeed but instead of transition to yet to the next step you decide to pause your workflow when you want when you want to do that well usually you you want to do that when you do whatever you can do with the information you have and now you need to pause because you are waiting for some input from the outside it can be a subscription something that will trigger subscription that will come back to your workflow hit your workflow and put it back into movement or it can be just that you pause and you expect that a user will come connect to your user interface and fill some form submit and continue the workflow so it's the poss the possibility here is to stop your workflow waiting for more input then that input can be from a user or it can be from your system something that happens in your system that triggers a call back to your workflow and put it back into movement and again you have your pose some request comes in you move to another step and then you transition to the end as I was saying, I, I will use today the same use case uh, that I implemented for choreography sagas. So, but let's recap. If you haven't seen the, the, this other webinar, I will explain here what is the, the use case anyway. So in event sourced system, there is one major challenge. It's how can I have unique fields inside my model that are unique across all my entities? For that specific uh, model so this problem is called set based consistency validation so let's imagine that the user here is a uh, event sourced entity and i have a unique id that i can always use to reference to this uh, to to different uh, models to different instance and inside i have the name and i have email but i don't want the email to, to be reused. I want each user to have a unique email address, but I also want to be able to change that email address eventually. So I cannot use the email address as unique identifier. So the email address needs to be unique, but it's not my identifier because I want to be able to change. It. So if it was a traditional SQL relational database, I would have a table for the email, I would say, okay, this, this column here needs to be unique. But in an event source system, we don't have such a table. What we have is a journal with all the sequence of events that I can use to reconstruct my model here. So I cannot just go to this journal and scan all the, the, the payloads of all the events that I have to find out if someone uh, is already using this email address. And as I was saying, the Kelix uh, entity lives in its own transaction. So I, I cannot uh, send a command to an entity and say, OK, create this entity. But before you create it, make sure that all the other entities uh, are not using this email address. I don't have the, most, the possibility to scan my whole system. So I need to have other means to do that. So the way to do that is one of the possible solutions for that is to create a barrier. So here we have this user as a will be it will be implemented as an event sourced entity and we have another entity that I will call it a unique email entity and the ID of this entity will be the email address and because it's a value entity a key value entity in Calix it's guaranteed that there is only one for this for a given email address there is only one in the system so it's kind of a barrier for me so as I did on the Choreography Saga webinar, what we'll do here is when I need to create a user, I will first create an email address. If it's already in use, then I cannot create that user. I have to change the, the commands, the, the, my request. And But if it's not in use, I will create this unique email address for the first time, and I will reserve for that user that I want to create. 
So I kind of create this record, this key value record, the unique mail address, and then I move forward and I will create the entity. But as we said, those entities, they live in their own transaction. So it can happen that I create the unique email address, but then I fail to create the user. When that happens, I need to have some compensation, uh, compensating actions to uh, free the email address because now the email address is reserved for this user that I was not able to, to create. So I need, if I fail to create the user, I need to go back here and unreserve this email address. And if I create the user, I can go back here and say, okay, it's created, um, it's confirmed, and it's in used by this other uh, entity. And instead of using a choreography here, where you, in, the, in the previous implementation, I was listening to events and to states change and coordinating the, the change by using subscriptions, here we will create a workflow that will be our center point that we use to coordinate the whole. So visually, it will be something like that. We have the workflow here. I will not have an application controller anymore. I will just hit the workflow directly from the outside. And, and then I have my two entities. And uh, when I initiate the workflow, the first transition for this workflow will be move to the reserve email step. So Calyx will execute move the workflow to the that first step that is that will call the reserve email on the unique email entity, creating the entity if it doesn't exist yet and, uh, and reserving the email or failing if it is already in use. So let's say that here's the sunny day, uh, sunny case, sunny day scenario. I reserve the email, it return, and then the workflow will say, okay, now that we created the, that we reserved the email address, let's create the, the user, let's move to the next step which will be, let's transition to the next step, which will be, which is create user. So now we do a call to the user, we create the entity and it returns and we say, okay, good. I have, I did both calls and now I can confirm the email. I can go back to the unique email entity and confirm that it, that this entity is, uh, this email address is effectively in use by the user that I just created. And when this call returns, I can finalize my workflow. So I have, I first transition transition to us to the first step. First step completes. I transition to the second step. It completes. I transition transition to my third step, and then when the third one finish, I just transition to to the end to the end of my workflow. Of course, that's the sunny day uh, uh, scenario, but things uh, errors happen it can be that i have a validation error here or the user entity service is down for some reason so i reserve the email address and when i'm about to create the user it fails so in the demo that i do that I will, we're gonna see today i will put a retry strategy uh, a max retry set to three so what will happen is First, I will create the user, it will fail, and then I, I will simulate some errors, it will fail, and then it will try again, and then again, with some interval between the retries, and then it will retry for, three, for the third time, so we're gonna see in the logs four tries, the first one, and then the first uh, attempt, and then the three retries, and then it will finally fail, and the workflow will have another step, which is a failover step. But after trying three times, we say, okay, that's enough. I don't want to try uh, again because I probably, there are probably major issue here. So let's fail over to yet another step here, the unreserved email. And then we unreserve the email as usual, and then we can finish the workflow. So here the difference is that I have this workflow place where I, my workflow has a, it's a point for me where everything goes back to the workflow. The workflow can then make a decision. So the interactions between the parts are coordinated by the workflow. And as the name says, it's an orchestration saga. 
So it's like the or workflow here, it's acting like, like the con conductor of an orchestra. It's the one that's managing, driving all the process. Let's go to the code. So here the model is exactly the same as in the Choreograph Saga webinar. I did one small change here on the entity. I will show this right now. I put some random failure method here that I call. When I created the user, I will do some random failure because I want to simulate failures uh, and, and I want you to see the work for recovering from them. So what, what the condition here is, if I send, I, um, if the user ID that I'm cho choosing here is a negative number, I will randomly make it fail. So if it returns true, I will fail with this message. But if I send a positive ID or a string, because uh, ID is a string, no, it's a, it's a string in Calyx. The unique ID from an entity is always in a string. But if it's a, a, some text, if it contains some letters, I, it just succeed. If it's a positive integer, it succeed. But if it's a negative integer, I will eventually let it fail. Okay, so let's see the workflow. The first thing here that I want to show is that a workflow has a state. The user creation workflow has an ID that is exactly the same as the user ID, just for simplicity. It has a state, define it here. And uh, the first time that you start it, we'll send a post request to this method with the command to create the user. Then if, I, if the workflow was never created, if the state is null, or if it's in the posit state, and we're gonna see that more in detail later, I will save the state. I will create the state, say, okay, I'm on that state uh, um, phase of my process, reserving an email. And uh, let, let me show here what is the state. The state of a workflow is the user ID, the initial creation command, some status that can be reserving email, creating user, confirming email, finished, paused or failed. And uh, so that's the status and eventually it may have an error message that I can inspect the state and see uh, what is going on. So when I start it here, I will create I will save the state, the state of my workflow, and then I will tell the Calyx engine here to say, and now it's time to transition to this phase, the reserve email uh, phase step in which, and that's the input for that first step. I'm reserving the email here. That's the command on the unique email entity to reserve it. And then I reply, to the caller, I send back the state of my workflow. And if the workflow is not in, is already created and it's not posed, I don't want to interfere, interfere in it. I, I will just return the, the state as it is. I will not force any transition here. The workflow may be finished. The workflow may be running. If I send this request twice, I will just send back the current state of my workflow. Now, the definition of workflow is a method that you have to implement. Here's where you define the whole, all the steps of your workflow. And uh, I will go to the last, to the end of this method, where I will show you, well, I want to show you this part. First, here you need to return the workflow definition. And the workflow definition, you build it by calling this API here and adding steps. Those are the steps of our workflow. And we can imagine that, so the order of the steps here, you can, you can add them the way you want. Does, they don't need to be executed in that order. That doesn't, doesn't matter. Because the, the goal here is that you, define, you need to declare the steps. And each step may transition to any other step. You can, you can go back and forth between two steps a few times and then decide to finish your workflow. So the order is not important but it's important that all the steps are, are defined in your workflow definition. So we have a reserve. The first step that we, we will execute here is the reserve email address. 
first is the battery no so but first i want to know if the email is available if it succeeds we will transition to the create user step and this step is a special one because here i'm saying if it keeps failing if i, I if it fails i want to retry it three times at most three times and if after three retries it, it keeps failing i want to unreserve the image so here's the failure failover uh, transition here is i will go to this other step which actually unreserved revert the reserve email step it basically unreserved the email now if the create user succeeds then the transition and we'll see in a while the transition from create user is the use, uh, confirmation of the email so let's see first the reserve email which is the first step here maybe important to show here whenever you declare a transition you may you're not of, you have two possibilities you can say transition to this step and there is no input there is no new data that you need to pass to that step or you have to pass the command or the the input for the step so here in the transition to i'm saying reserve email Oops, i messed up something here revert yeah i i'm reserving the email here i'm transition to the reserve email and the input is this command here this type so let's go to the reserve image this is this one i have the name defined here because i want to use in the logs as well so i just put on a variable and um, this call will receive as input the reserve email class okay then calyx will take that and say okay i need to transition to that i have already the input that you defined uh, in the beginning of the, this file now when you say transition calyx will take that and it will execute that for you and this is an async call so it means that the lambda that you are passing here this command is this type we can see here command is the reserve email address so now calyx in the background will, will execute this lambda passing the payload that you define it and here we will use uh, the component client to hit the value entity email the value the unique email entity and reserve this email address we will execute it immediately so it's an async call it's expecting a completion stage and if it succeeds we'll map it to result success if it fails we'll map it to result failure we'll see in a while what we're gonna do with those two here but let's first just to recap what happens here on the reserve method on the reserve method here i have this value and value entity to that works as a barrier for me to protect the email address and when i reserve it so the email address has an address has a status can be not used reserved or confirmed and it may have an owner the initial state of this value entity is the address it's not in use it doesn't have a, a owner yet when you reserve it with this command i will see okay it's already in use and it's already reserved for another owner so if that's the case i will emit this error email is already reserved so game over here if you hit this this method twice to reserve for the same owner then it's already reserved for this owner so i have nothing to do i just say okay it's good it's reserved for you i don't have anything to do now if we if it's not yet reserved i will update the state and say okay this email address is now reserved for this owner here back to the workflow so we do the call if it succeed if it's successful we map to this one otherwise we map to a failure what i what i want to do here is to capture the failure message because i want to put it in the state of my workflow so what i do next is so calyx will do this call for you 
in the background when it gets the results that will be either result success or result failure it will then call the end method so for each step that's how it works you define a call, you define a call that needs to be executed by Kdex by the by the runtime when we have the the results we co we come back to your step and say okay we got the results what should i do next and in this and then method you define what is the next thing to do so the result comes back from that call we pass it to you here now you can check and what i'm doing here okay oh it's a failure so i will do some logging and i will return here an effect workflow effect in which i update my state saying oh it's paused and here's the error message during the demo i explain why it's posted here so the status is post so there was an error the email is already reserved that's why it failed so i just post my workflow i will not leave it leave it let it go to completion i will put it in a posted state it will it won't try again to reserve it will just stop and wait for extra input and then instead of transition to something else i will just tell calyx i want it to pause so don't don't mix it up here this pause is just the status inside my state because i want to be able to visualize it while here pause is us telling calyx now it's time to pause this because i will bring more data eventually now if it's a successful uh, if you successfully reserve the email address we move forward and we say okay now I'm, i will move to creating user phase and you return here the fact no so first update the state then transition to create user step let's see the create user so let's say that we transition to this step now what will happen is okay i have uh, let me go back here when I transition to create user I tell Calyx what is the input of this next step no and the, the input here is something that I store it in my state which is let's have a look is the initial creation command I just put it on the state because I, I later I want to use it no, and that's the moment that I want to find back this original command, the creation command. And now I move to the create user step and that's my input. Let's have a look on the implementation of create user step. I make a call. This time it's not an async call. It's a call in Calyx uh, uh, terms. It's a deferred call. I will use the client here and I will return a deferred call. That's what this call will return to me. Uh, no, that's not what I want to show. This is return a deferred call that Calyx will run in the background for us. So what it does, well, it will talk to the event source entity identified by this ID, and we call the create user method in this on this entity. And here we come to this piece of code that I show already showed already where we have this random failure eventually depending on the condition we will force a failure here if there is no name it will also failure otherwise i will create the user that's exactly uh, all the same that i did on the choreography one back here good this call returns a done so the output of this call is the input of the and then once this returns calyx come back to you say okay i execute your step now what do you want me to do and then you tell calyx okay that's the type here i don't know if you know this trick i don't want to use i don't need to use the this type done here in my lambda so I have this trick if you put two on underscore is valid java code and it's just say okay the underscore i don't i don't use it it's just like a way to say i'm not using this type here whatever here update states so i create the user now i update the state what is the next thing that i will do i will confirm the email address 
and I transition to confirm. Here the difference is the transition, I'm not passing a type, an input type, because confirmation email does not have an input. So I can just say now transition to confirm email. Let's see what it ha what happens here. Okay, confirm email, yet another call, but this time I don't have an input type, it's just a Java supplier here. And uh, and inside it I will call the value entity, the email that we reserved for it, and I will confirm. Let's have a look on the confirm method here that will be called in this step. If it's reserved, I will confirm it and I'm done. If the status of my email address is something else, I don't care. I just don't want this method to fail because of that. And then I just return done. Here as confirmed, so I update the state of my value entity, taking the current state, mutate it to as confirmed, which confirm set the status of this email address to confirm. Okay, I confirmed the email. Then Calix come back here again here confirm returns done. That's the output of my call, and then therefore that's the input of the and then method. Once again, I'm not using it here, so I'm ignoring use the the trick of using two underscores. But what I want to do here, it's okay. I will update my state. I say I'm done. I finished. I reserve the email. I create the user. And I confirm that this email address is in use by that user. And then I can finish my workflow. So whenever I return here the event, the, the effects, I will just show I, I can transition to something without an input. I can transition to some to a step with some inputs. We have seen both. I can transition to posed state. The the workflow goes to a pose to a halt and wait for someone to provide more input or I can go to a finished state. When I transition to end, what's the case here? It means that this workflow will not be executed anymore. We reach the end of the workflow. Okay, one more part is the, so we saw the reserve email, we saw the create user, we saw the user confirmation, we haven't seen yet the unreserved email. So the create user, if it fails, it will try a few times, three times, and, and then if it keeps failing, it will transition or fail over to this other step. Let's see what it is. So we got in this situation, we need now, we were unable to create our user, we have an email that was reserved in the system, we failed to create the user, now I want to free that email address that it can be eventually be used by someone else. So here again, the step defines a call, and the call takes go talk again to the value entity here, the unique email entity, and it calls the unreserved method. Let's have a look what it does. If this entity, if the unique email entity is in a reserved state and I call this method, I will just go back to the empty state, just reset its state. And uh, otherwise I will just ignore it. I just say, no, it's good. I'm not reserved, so you cannot unreserve me. And the empty state is back to not use it without owner. If I'm in that state, I can reserve this email address for someone else. That's the goal here. Back here. No, one more. The call will unreserve the email address. And when it returns again, it returns done. Again, I'm not using this type here, but I do update my state and I say, okay, I fail, I fail it to create the user. So the status of this workflow is failed, game over, I not try again because I move it, this workflow to the finished state, I end the workflow. So here it's everything that I need to have to implement this use case, one single class with the steps and the coordination between them. The workflow here is managing, uh, managing and driving the whole process.
Now, of course, we want to see it run, it, it running. Okay, I hope it's there. So first, let me check, like I did before, this email address is not in use. I will create user 001. We will also be the unique ID for this workflow. And here's the payload and it will reserve this email address. Let's see. Okay, that's the status of the, my workflow here. User ID, this one, that's my initial command. It started in reserving the email address. That's the first step. There is no error message, but in the meantime, this workflow already completed. Okay, let's see what happened. What is happening here? I hit the workflow, start workflow, reserve email. It's here. And then it hits the unique email entity, reserving the email address, back to the workflow step. Okay, reserve email that's reserved. Workflow move to create user step. It creates the user. It hits the entity here, creating the user, back to the workflow, confirm the email address, bam, back to the unique email entity, email is reserved. If I check the status of my workflow now, it is finished and my email address is reserved for this user and the user is also created. Uh, I have one here that will force a failure. I have a user without a name and when I call it, let's see here the email address is not in use. I will do that. The email is now reserved, but if I check the workflow, it's creating the user. And I can see here that Calyx is emitting some errors. There is an error here because it failed to create the user. The name is not filled, so we know that it will fail. Here again, here again, third third time, third, third retry, and now the workflow will fall back to the failover uh, step, which is unreserved the email address. If I go back here and check the status of this invalid user, invalid uh, acme.com email address, it's not in use anymore. I have one more here, which is just for the fun. So as I said, when you created the user, well, that's this is the one that we just saw. I didn't put the, the username, the username, uh, the, the, his, the, the full name for that user is empty, so it fails. But now we're gonna see this one, the random failure. And as I was explaining, if the entity ID is a negative integer, I will randomly make it fail, just for the fun. So here I will generate a request with a random number. The ID here, it's a random number from minus 100 to minus one. Uh, that's the name, then the email, because I will call it a few times, so I want to reserve each time a different email. I'm using a random UID here in the in name, email name. And, and then we can later check here the workflow states. Let's see the first one. Okay, this one passed. This one passed. It. It's 68. First one passed. It. It's finished. Okay, let's try. Let's try one more. Okay, this is failing. failing. Okay, fail once, okay, fail twice, fail three times. Let's see it will fail once more. Okay, it, it passed because it's random. It failed three times. If we have one with four times, uh, we're gonna see it's, which number was that? 18, we can check. It's finished. One more, let's see one more here. Failing. already failed three times let's see if it will fail once more oh it didn't ah uh, i want to see one unreserved email let's see this one. Oh, this one passed once more let's let's see if we got some chance ah it passed i want one more 
fail it, fail it. Third time. Oh, it passed. Anyway, so of course, if it fails once more, we are on the on the third uh, case here. Uh, it will fail after three times. It will give up. We could see it with the when I did this one. I will change the ID here. This one will keep failing because I don't have the name. I hoped I I was hoping to have the random one to fail once at least at least, but it didn't didn't work out. Anyway. That's just for the fun. So back to the slides. So what are the main characteristics of a workflow or orchestration saga? You can build it completely based on the workflow. You don't need to have subscriptions. You don't need to, to, to wait for the, for the events to be propagated to your subscriptions, to go back to your choreography. You have one single place where you can better control the flow of, a, of, a, of of the calls that you want to, to execute. Uh, once triggered, like choreography, it moves like a wave until completion, if not paused. Ah, I forgot to show this one. Let me go back here. I want to, I reserved this email address for, for John. No, that's why I want to, I had the pause one. I almost forgot to show this one. Now I will create another user and trying to use the same email address. Let's see what happens. It says that it's reserving the email address, but we know that this email address is already picked. So if I go here, it's saying, oh, it failed to reserve the email address because it's already picked, but it's paused. Why I put it in post? Because if I complete this workflow and I'm using the same user ID, I cannot restart it again. For that, I need to have a workflow ID that is different than the user ID. But for my demo, I want to show this. So I decide, let's use the same user ID, make it simple, and then I can show the pose. So what we'll do here, so this workflow is not finished. It's not trying to reserve this email address anymore. It's just pose. Say, okay, the input that I have is wrong. I cannot continue. So now I can come here and change the email address, and I will send I request to the same workflow and as you see when I hit this method it will we'll, we'll, we'll have here another payload the command I'm modifying the input here so let's see now I'm reserving for undo and if I check here it's finished so that's one of the cases where you can use a pose you can decide that something went wrong you pose and you wait for someone to bring come in and and change some data provide more input so your workflow can move on just to show here what happened when we hit the start button or the start uh, endpoint if I'm if the if I don't have a state for this workflow it means that I'm really started for the first time but in that last case here it was in a pause state so I accepted the call the request anyway and I updated the state and I transitioned back to reserve email so I kind of restart my workflow that's one one possible use of pause in in workflows so as I was saying it triggers once triggered it moves like a wave until completion if not paused and that made me remember that I, I wanted to show the pause, the pause uh, uh, transition. Once you, you can pause it and require request more input, receive more input from either some subscription for some other system or from a user. Uh, it's possible to inspect your workflow because it has states and that allows you to track where you are. And that's the biggest difference compared to choreography where you don't have a clear uh, way to track where is your workflow, uh, where is your choreography saga. In an orchestration saga, because you have the central point, the, the conductor of your orchestra, in, the, in our case here, the Kelix workflow, you have this point where you can go check the state and see how this is moving or if it's stuck because of some error, if you need to provide some um, some inputs, if you have, need to unlock it or not, or you can analyze the, the flow. I have this extra slide here, assuming that you have watched the other webinar about choreography, and now we can talk about the compare both here. So what are the differences? In choreographies, 
we depend on events and state chains and subscriptions. We have our entities emitting events or emitting value entities propagating their state chains and we have subscriptions to react to them. On the other side, we have a, a fixed place where we can coordinate everything. We have this conductor of our orchestra that is the workflow. Choreography moves like a wave until completion. I can say the same for the workflows, but we can pause. Choreography, it's important to watch out for head of line errors. If you didn't watch the other, uh, the, my previous webinar, I recommend you to, to watch it because head of line errors is an important uh, thing you have to learn when you are dealing with subscriptions. Be aware of that. And as I was saying in the other uh, webinar, it's hard to debug because you don't have a place to track the progress. Now, back to workflows, we can pro uh, track the progress. We can rely on events and subscriptions if we want. We can post the, sub the, the workflow and subscribe, have an action subscribing to some events that hits back your workflow and put your workflow back into movement. That's completely po uh, possible. Yeah, and then as I was saying, you can pose and uh, wait for extra inputs. You can also cancel your workflow. It's running. You can say, okay, at every single point, you can hit it with through some endpoint and say, wherever you are, from now on, you move to this other state. And you can recover in case of failures. You have this possibility to say, okay, I will try this thing. I will try this step three times, otherwise I will fail over to this other step where I have the, the chance to do some cleanup. Uh, the source code for this workflow uh, demo, it's also on GitHub. You can scan this code and, and, um, and download the code and play around with that. And um, you can also join our Slack uh, channel if you have questions and want to reach out. Otherwise, this other QR code brings you to the start, uh, uh, get started with Calyx page in our website. That's all for this webinar. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much.